Whoa, 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 what the fuck are you guys doing here? This is part two. You're supposed to watch part one on Heath's channel first. Click the annotation if you haven't seen it yet. For those of you who have seen part one already, welcome to part two. It's my honor to introduce our special guest, Heath. Hello, it's great to work with my fellow stick kind. Today's video is going to be debunking Bible Flockbox. If you recall from my other video, he's the one that thinks raped women should not get abortions. Anyway, without further ado, let's roll the clip. Additionally, intermediate fossils between fish and amphibians have been found. My guess is that Matthew Centaro was talking about the Tiktaalik fossil discovered in 2006. And it wouldn't be the first time one of evolutionary scientists' desperate attempts to prove evolution from fish fails. Take the coelacanth, for example. Evolutionary scientists used to think that amphibians evolved from a group of fishes that included the coelacant, which was known only from fossils, but they dropped this idea when living coelacants were found from 1938, showing no evidence of evolution from the oldest fossil coelacants to the living examples. The evidence from the coelacant actually supports creation because it shows that DNA, the genetic code, has remained stable throughout time. No, that's absolutely false. First, the coelacanth is not the most recent shared ancestor between land and sea animals. It's actually the lungfish. The coelacanth and lungfish diverged from each other before the lungfish evolved into land animals. You're using outdated information here. Second, the coelacanth has evolved since then, although rather slowly. You fucking liar! We've mapped out the structure diversity. The reason it evolved so slowly is due to the lack of environmental pressure, not because DNA remains the same. Before a living coelacanth was discovered, scientists dated the fossils they discovered to be 60 to 70 million years old. If it really was that old, that only makes them look ridiculous because it proves that the coelacanth never changed over all those millions of years, in effect disproving evolution. Actually, it's more like 400 million years, and we still date it to that. Even if it didn't evolve for that long, that wouldn't disprove evolution. There's nothing that says that everything has to continuously evolve, just that they did at one point. All organisms could stop changing now, and evolution would still be true. Here's an actual picture of a coelacanth that was found alive. Contrary to what evolutionary scientists claimed at the time, it had no transitional features. It was just a fish. Just because one fish stayed a fish for a long time does not mean that nothing evolved more significantly. Living fossils don't disprove evolution any more than radio stations disprove online streaming. Therefore, evolutionary scientists have a bad track record when it comes to finding transitional species. No, they just found a species that happened to stay relatively similar. They don't have a bad track record because they didn't find something that didn't exist for one animal. We found lots of transitional evidence for birds, crustaceans, elephants, whales, dolphins, humans, and more. It's all a bunch of lies because they don't want to accept the fact that we were created by God. Absolutely false. Evolution wasn't developed in order to oppose creation. All scientists did was look at the evidence and draw a conclusion without any presuppositions or confirmation bias. It's not evolution vs creation. It's not just two options. Creation isn't even scientific at all. We didn't even give a glimpse of creation when we developed evolution. Yeah, we know that we were created by Lord Brahma, but that doesn't change the fact that we've evolved since then. As well as therapsids, which are the intermediates between reptiles and mammals? Evolutionists have devised a chart illustrating how reptiles may have evolved into mammals based on some fossils they have discovered. But this is a joke, because like I mentioned before, macroevolution of one kind of animal to another isn't possible because of the DNA code barrier, which prevents this from happening. You know what you just did there? You just said, look, this is evidence of reptilian and mammalian evolution. Oh wait, the DNA code barrier. Stop disregarding evidence. And also, your DNA code barrier doesn't exist. You know what, let's take a look at the source you linked to your video. Okay, I already see that this site is untrustworthy because it's a creationist site. Just look at this stupid site name, 6days.org. <laughs> okay, 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 let's just give it a chance, shall we? I'll just start reading from the top. 
Inside of every one of your cells is the blueprint of who you are. You have inherited all your characteristics from your parents including your ability to have children. If your parents could not have children, you won't be able to either. What the fuck? I've only read two sentences and I've already found something wrong. Firstly, if your parents can't have children, how can you even exist to begin with? Oh my god, dude. Secondly, infertility is not necessarily passed through generations. Many infertility causes are actually environmental, not genetic. So you just fucked up twice. Alright, let's go on. This information is passed down through DNA. If you and your spouse were able to have children every day for the rest of your lives, you would never have two children the same. Uh, no, that's also wrong. You guys completely forgot about monozygotic twins. Okay, let's go on to the next paragraph. Even though every germ cell is different, no new information is ever added. Bullshit! Information is added all the time through mutations that are beneficial. Um, yeah, I kind of see you talking about mutations later. This is called a mutation, almost all mutations are harmful, yada yada yada. Alright, get this. For one kind of animal to turn into another kind of animal, it would require billions of beneficial mutations. Not only has this never been observed, it cannot happen because of error checking mechanisms. Fuck you, you clearly don't know what you're talking about. Error checking mechanisms are great, but they don't correct everything. Then you have natural selection actually selecting out the beneficial mutations. You know what? I can't take this site anymore. Nope, nope, nope. Not to mention, if the process of evolving from reptiles to mammals was such a complicated one, involving so many stages, why is it that today we don't see any intermediate species between reptiles and mammals? All we see is reptiles and mammals. <laughs> you know that reptiles and mammals are only classifications, right? And the animals we see today are the result of evolution. Before reptiles and mammals were a thing, they used to be a pre-reptile slash pre-mammal form. We can sometimes just call them reptiles because they fit in the classification system, but that is awfully misleading. This is exactly the trap that you fell into. Yes, we don't see any current living species that live between the mammal and reptile form. But the fact that you claim this already shows that you don't have a solid understanding of evolution. That's like saying, if Americans came from Europeans, why do we not see any half-transitional humans in between? And there is a clear distinction between the two. What? Did reptiles and mammals stop evolving at one point in time, and all the intermediate species which would prove evolution suddenly die off? Oh my fucking god! Can you just open a goddamn textbook? Intermediate species or species in transitions didn't die off or go extinct. They evolved to what we have today. Jesus fuck! Morality disproves evolution. Yet another falsehood that has been spread by the anti-evolution movement is the idea that morality itself cannot exist through evolution. This one's fairly easy to disprove. In fact, the counter is that scientists have revealed studies that show that it would not even be possible for a primate species to survive without some sort of basic sense of morality. Having morals is basically knowing the difference between right and wrong. Even animals have been proven to have this sense so the thought that primates didn't have it before eventually evolving into modern human beings is pretty ridiculous. Simply put, without morality, nothing would internally govern selfishness, lying, adultery, stealing, and of course, murder. That's why we aren't going around killing each other trying to steal each other's land. People still argue it, but if you look at evolution, human beings are fundamentally good. That is probably the most ridiculous thing that I've heard in this video so far. Evolution didn't give people morality, God did. For example, most moral principles that govern people today come from the Ten Commandments in the Bible. The Ten Commandments tell us not to murder, lie, steal, and so on. No, that's simply not the case. Sure, maybe you get your morality from the Bible, but it's not like the Bible has a monopoly on morality. You could also get your morality from Upanishads, the Bhagavad Gita, the Dhammapada, countless sutras, the Quran, the Book of Mormon, the Kitabi Aktas, Hubbard's The Way to Happiness, and Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Or, as is the case with most people, nothing at all because moral judgments are intuitive, not requiring anything external. Only after making moral judgments do most people rationalize them. Also, God has given us a conscience in order to make us feel guilty when we do something wrong, and He drives conviction home to us by the Holy Spirit. Or, or, maybe, Hear me out, maybe that's just emotions. 
our morality and conscience is a sign that there is a higher authority that we are subject to. However, this doesn't really fit into the theory of evolution because evolution teaches that we are the highest form of life on the planet. Therefore, we are subject to no one and we make our own laws. What? No. Evolution just states that organisms change over time. That's it. The problem with that is, if it suits us to lie, murder, and steal, in order to get what we want, that's what we will do. And that is exactly what has happened with some renowned evolutionists in the past. For example, Adolf Hitler, known for murdering 11 million people during the Holocaust, endorsed a program in Germany to breed a superior race. The scheme was based on a horrific evolutionary theory called eugenics that was founded by Charles Darwin's cousin, Francis Galton. First off, argument from consequences. Secondly, appeal to emotion. Third, Hitler was a strong Christian and he believed that he was acting according to the will of God, as he expresses in Mein Kampf. So you saying that evolution led to this is just as valid as me saying that Christianity led to this. But let's ignore the fact that there were intense political causes behind the whole thing. Russian communist leader Leon Trotsky was a fanatical supporter of Marxism and Darwinism. In the Russian Civil War of 1918 to 1920, he used the force of the Red Army to stamp out whoever he decided was an enemy of the Soviet Union. He confiscated food from peasants, brutalized the Ukrainian army of insurgent peasants, and killed its guerrilla leader, N.I. Makhno. He inflicted torture and violence against Christians, mercilessly trashed churches, and led the society of the godless to get rid of religion. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars, and break down their images, and cut down their groves, and burn their graven images with fire. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. And ye say, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains, and to the hills, and to the rivers, and to the valleys. Behold, I, even I, will bring a sword upon you, and I will destroy your high places. All your altars shall be desolate, and your images shall be broken, and I will cast down your slain men before your idols. Thus saith the Lord God, smite with thine hand, and stamp with thy foot and say, Alas, for all the evil abominations of the house of Israel, for they shall fall by the sword, and by famine, and by the pestilence. He was responsible for the murder of up to four million people. Trotsky was mesmerized by Charles Darwin's origin of species. He said, Darwin stood for me like a mighty doorkeeper at the entrance to the temple of the universe. He said that Darwin's ideas intoxicated him. Russian dictator and revolutionist Joseph Stalin was studying at Tiflis Theological Seminary when he started to read the works of Charles Darwin. One of his friends later said in a book that when Stalin read Darwin, he became an atheist. The Theological Seminary expelled Stalin at the age of 19 because of his revolutionary connections. Stalin is regarded as the worst mass murderer the world has ever seen. Up to 49 million unnatural deaths are linked to him. With God out of his way, after embracing Darwin's evolutionary ideas, Stalin had no restrictions of conscience or morals. Absolutely. Darwinism is the only thing that contributed to Stalin's actions. And if you accept evolution, then you will become just like him, because that's the only rational thing to do. Ignoring, of course, the tons of people who are and were evolutionists and didn't commit atrocities. But these are the people who define what evolution means, I guess. He set up a terrorist police state persecuted and murdered innocent communists, and instituted trials in which most surviving Bolshevik leaders were found guilty of treachery and were executed. He even had Leon Trotsky assassinated. Holy shit, what is this appeal to emotion? Jesus, dude. You like ran out of fucking arguments or something, and now the only thing you know how to do is pull out the Stalin card? Shame on you. Why do religious people love to use logical fallacies, especially appeal to emotion? Okay, okay, first of all, these people most definitely did not do their horrible acts because of fucking evolution. You sure did a good job making it seem that way though. They just didn't fucking go like, oh yeah, let's kill all these fucking people because of natural selection. No! You know what? I know why you're doing this. It's in order to divert attention away from the horrible things in your own religion. 
Second of all, even if what you were saying were true, which it isn't, that doesn't make evolution false. It doesn't deny it one fucking bit. Oh, wait, no, but you don't like it, therefore it's not true, right? Fucking religious logic. Nobody's ever witnessed evolution. If anything, the scientific community has already largely disproved this myth with the previous explanations that I just said. You mean that bait and switch that you did with microevolution in order to try and prove macroevolution? Shut the fuck up with your bait and switch, you don't even know what that means. Oh, and yes, proving evolution in a short period of time does prove evolution in a long time too. Because the only difference is time. But I have saved this last one because it's a big argument on the side of anti-evolutionists. See, people tend to believe only what they want to see, and if they want to combat the opposition of their theories, they often challenge the physical evidence of the opposition. Yeah, like evolutionists who deny the existence of God even though there is so much evidence around us in support of God's existence that even a child can recognize it. What the fuck is this piece of shit talking about? Like, what the actual fuck? Evidence for God? I didn't think one person can spew out so much shit. When it comes to evolution, it is a historical science. Evolution is not science. It doesn't even qualify as a scientific theory because it can't be observed or reproduced by experimentation. Fuck you. Who gave you permission to say whether or not it's a scientific theory? You're just denying whatever the fuck goes against your religion. Gravity? Oh, that's science. Higgs boson? That's science. Medicine? That's science. Evolution? Oh god no, what the fuck are you talking about? That's not science. It has been confirmed by fact and is based on many independent pieces of evidence. Many atheists and evolutionists actually believe this statement because if you tell a lie loud enough and long enough and repeat it enough times, people will eventually start to believe it. And that's exactly how the theory of evolution works. <laughs> This is coming from someone who believes in a magical sky daddy. In fact, what you said just now perfectly describes your religion. Repeat it enough so that eventually people will believe it. Oh yeah, and don't forget to start indoctrinating your kids while they're still infants. That way, they won't have the proper brain capacity to question it. Let's be honest, if religious people actually started brainwashing their children after they turn, let's say, 13 years old, the number of religious people will start to decline so fast. Oh, and by the way, we don't get people to accept evolution just by repeating it to them. Hell no. See, the cool thing about science is that anyone can do it. You can go find and look at the evidence yourself. People are taught this nonsense in school from a young age, and it gets repeated to them through their academic life so they just accept it as true. Fuck you, are you kidding me? How can you accuse science of doing that when that's exactly what you religious people do? You teach them at a young age, then repeat it to them their whole fucking lives. Science does none of that. Students learn about evolution mostly in high school. That's way after they develop the capacity to think for themselves. And after that, they get to choose whether or not they want to study ecology and evolution. We don't fucking repeat it over and over again to them. What the fuck are these accusations? Go fuck yourself. Also, people have a tendency of believing a big lie over a small lie, and evolution is one of the biggest whoppers of a lie in existence. Your god is the biggest fucking lie in existence. Geology, paleontology, botany, zoology, comparative anatomy, molecular biology, and genetics are all fields of science that allow us to see the history of continuing patterns of evolution. All of these fields of science bring home the conclusion that you'd have to disprove science in order to disprove evolution. What Matthew Santaro just did here is claim that evolution is a science. As a result, anything opposed to it is unscientific and therefore unreliable. Absolutely incorrect. He didn't just say it's a science. He listed out all those fields of science that back up evolution. He said if you are against evolution, you are also against all those other fields too. So much science backs it up that if you don't believe in evolution, you pretty much just don't believe in science. End of story. Your reply is one of the worst I've ever seen. It's clear you don't do reply videos much. Instead of addressing each of the fields of science that he brought up, all you say is Der her evolution is not science, as if that holds any weight at all. This is really a subtle attack on creationism and intelligent design. 
First of all, it's not evolution via creationism. Scientists don't give the slightest fuck about your fairy tale. See, if we compare Darwin's theory to Lamarck's theory, then yes, proving one will hurt the other because they both attempt to scientifically describe evolution. But creationism is a whole separate topic on its own. With no evidence to back it up, it doesn't even meet the minimum criteria to be even glanced at. In effect, he's saying evolutionists are smart because they are backed by science, and you creationists are dumb. And that's true, you creationists are dumb motherfuckers. I have news for you though. Creationism and intelligent design is a science. It uses the same knowledge about the world and how it works that evolutionists use to support their claims. Like the knowledge that the vast majority of animals that existed ages ago don't exist today, and the knowledge that the vast majority of animals that exist today didn't exist ages ago, or the knowledge that organisms are simpler and simpler the older they are, or the fact that the Bible proposes a model of the universe that we've long disregarded. The book of Genesis, by its own account, was written thousands of years after creation, and the writer never makes a claim as to how he got that knowledge. So you're going to believe that because scientists can't convince you when they draw reasonable conclusions about the world around us? It just interprets that knowledge in a different way. It uses common sense. Evolution is actually a very demonic deception because it undermines creation, the Bible, God's law, and the plan of salvation. Psalm chapter 11 verse 3 in the Bible says, If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? In other words, we are powerless to do anything if the foundation of our faith is overthrown. And what is the foundation of the Christian faith? It's biblical creation. And that's why you cling so strongly to it. You're looking at it from a completely biased, dogmatic, presupposing perspective, instead of actually trying to figure out what the truth is. Anything that you disagree with is immediately demonic, satanic, ungodly, what have you, because you can't stand to question your faith. You see, creation teaches that there is a God who created us, therefore he has authority over us, and he has given us a law, the Ten Commandments, to follow. As a result of breaking that law, our first parents, Adam and Eve, fell into sin and died. No, that's not how it happened. Do you even know how the Bible works? Not only was the Ten Commandments given long after Adam and Eve were dead, the commandments were just a small part of the laws given in the Bible because all the Old Testament was is a way of establishing a primitive system of government, and they didn't actually break any of the commandments when they disobeyed God. God punished all of us because they ate a fruit which, by God's design, they didn't know was wrong to do. God got mad because he didn't want us to become like God. Sin made it necessary for someone to come and save us, namely, Jesus Christ. How? If God is the one that we're sinning against, and God is the one who's punishing us for it, why does he need punishment by proxy? If God wants to forgive us, is he not able to do that without bloodshed? Is God not able to refrain from torturing people? Why does God need to kill his son to save us from himself? Does that not seem odd to you? He is God, who became a man and died on the cross for our sins so that we don't have to. He gives us power to live a new life, and he has given us hope of eternal life in paradise restored after his second coming. If you do away with biblical creation and replace it with evolution, you eliminate the reliability of scripture, the authority of God, his moral law, the need for Jesus as savior, and the hope of his second coming. Therefore, evolution is a masterpiece deception. Or perhaps evolution is based on fact. It's based on the world around us, and it's based on reality. And if your Bible contradicts reality, then maybe reality isn't the one that's wrong. Alright guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed watching our reply. If you still haven't seen part 1, I urge you to go watch it on Heath's channel. Here's an annotation for you guys. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. There's still so much pseudoscience on the internet left to address. Thank <laughs> you.